Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In the last two videos, we discussed several tools and techniques to fix harsh dark shadows in landscapes. While normally all the video ideas are my own, from time to time, we like to do videos on viewers' requests, and this is one of them. One of our viewers really wanted to know how to fix the face shadow in one of the images I showed in my intro video. Well, to that user, your wish is my command. Is it at all possible to fix this image? Or is this image too far gone? How do you really fix extremely bad face shadow in Affinity Photo? That's what we're going to answer in today's video. Before we go on and work on that extreme example, let's take on a less complicated one. So what are the steps? The first step I recommend is to try and test whether it is possible to correct the shadows using the shadow slider. However, as you can see here, for this case, it is not possible. Whether it is because this file is in the JPEG format rather than raw, or whether the shadows are just too dark, Using the shadow slider by itself does not correct the underexposure adequately. If the first step doesn't work, we can move on to the second method, and that is to bring up the shadows using the curves tool. So how do we do this? First, let's duplicate the layer and rename the layers to something more descriptive. Second, let's add a curves adjustment. I'll use an extremely steep curve to make sure the shadow is lightened sufficiently. I'll click the Merge button to merge the curves adjustment with the pixel layer below it. The next step is to select the shadows. Make sure the bottom layer is selected. Once that is done, click Select Tonal Range, Select Shadows. There, the shadows are selected. Next, let's create the mask. Click on the Mask Layer button. Drag the mask inside the top layer. The results are not great, and that's because the mask is not smooth. Tones in the mask change too abruptly. You can see this clearly when you view the mask, which you can do by Alt or Option clicking the thumbnail. What we want to do is to smoothen the mask. How do we do this? We can do that by applying a blur to the mask. Click on Live Filters, select Gaussian Blur. In the resulting panel, increase the radius. The result has been improved, but it's nowhere near acceptable. No problem. Let's further refine the mask by painting. I'll paint black to darken the overly brightened background. I'll paint white on the shadows to even out the brightening effect. Finally, I'll adjust the layer opacity for a more natural looking result. Here is the before and the after. A pretty good edit, wouldn't you say? Not only were the dark shadows brightened more adequately than the previous method, but the overall result is looking pretty natural. Not bad for a JPEG image. Now let's get back to our first image. Let's answer the question, is this even fixable? As you can see, compared to our last image, this particular image is more far gone, there is very little detail in the shadows, and any brightening adjustment does not do much to move the needle. I will therefore say it is not fixable, but then again, there's no harm in trying. Let's see how far we can push affinity. Let's perform the same steps as in the previous. First, duplicate the layer and add a curves adjustment. Because the shadows in this image 
have very little detail and does not respond to a normal curves adjustment, I'll adjust the curves much more drastically by moving the leftmost handle close to the top of the grid. Once that's done, click Merge. Next, select the shadows. Next, add the mask. Drag the mask inside the first layer. Next, blur the mask. Finally, I'll paint on the mask to refine the result. Here is the before and the after. There you go. As you can see, it is an improvement, but not as good a result as the previous. We were really limited by the low quality of the input file. Nevertheless, it was nice to test the capabilities of Affinity and our editing skills in the process. So to the user Carl who requested this, I hope I've helped answer your question. And to all our viewers, I hope this video was helpful. Do let me know if you have any other tools or techniques to fix extremely dark face shadow or far gone images. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.